Hey guys, it's Vince with Brutal Co. Hope your day's going good. Uh, a special video here. Um, I'm out in my hometown uh, at a sod farm. It's Sporting Valley uh, Sod. So um, with me today is Matt, uh, and he's gonna tell you a little bit about uh, how Sporting Valley got started uh, and what he does here, and uh, just some of the kind of cool history of, of, of Sporting Valley. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Sporting Valley started in 1969, Bob Hummer, he uh, graduated from Penn State, two-year turf degree, uh, was in golf courses for a little while, and his parents farmed just north of here. They grew potatoes on a 100-acre farm, uh, and so Bob took about a six-acre plot, and he told his dad he wanted to grow grass for sod, and his dad said, well, he said why don't people just plant seed? But uh, he wasn't discouraged, he, he kept going, and uh, with his connections from his golf course work, he uh, he grew the business. Uh, started out with a walk behind Ryan sod cutter. <laughs> you know, much like you you would use at your home or landscape, you'd rent from a from a garden store. That's what he started cutting sod with. Hand rolled it and put it on trucks. So like a big job back in the day would have been like uh, Bethlehem Steel, their their uh, you know corporate office. Mm -hmm. He hauled trucks up there, hand stacked it, and then he laid it. Uh, so it was, it was it was really a, a laborious operation, a labor of love, and uh, he kept this thing going. So he started with that, and then today uh, we're farming over 300 acres of sod. Okay, and that's all local within this this location yeah. here. Yeah, it's here here in East Hempfield, uh, Mannheim, Landisville area. Okay, uh, and then how did you get started into the sod business and, and working here? Uh, I went to school for plant science, and uh, I moved back to the area uh, probably a few years after school. I worked in golf courses for a little while. Uh, a lot of people follow that trend. That's that's kind of you know you, you graduate with a turf degree and you got to go work on a golf course. Well, that's there's a lot of other places you can work. And uh, Bob had an ad for a for a sprayer. He needed a, a farm applicator, so I, I could do that. So I came in and uh, that's that's how I started into business. And uh, I've been here 15 years. Awesome. Awesome, good deal. Um, so what varieties do you, uh, what cultivars do you have here? Um, like right now we're standing in bluegrass? It's 100% bluegrass, okay. three varieties. So this is a, you have the Mountain View hat on. Yep. Uh, this is the 365 SS. Okay. Uh, we started growing that uh, this year and it's it's done well for us. Um, That's we, new to this year? New to this year, okay. yeah. So we will grow 100% bluegrass, and then we grow uh, tall fescue, 90-10, 90% tall, 10% blue. And we have okay. that at some other farms. So one of the big questions I get from a lot of people is, how do you keep weeds out yeah. of this much uh, land? So POA, yeah. um, you know, everything. How do you, what's your process year in, year out? Or when you're about to seed, uh, do you put down a pre-emergent yeah. for that? Well, the, the, the quick answer I tell everybody is, the the best way to prevent weeds is have a lot of grass, right? That's step one is have a thick stand of grass and have, have good varieties, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of new homes, uh, especially that go in that are seeded, are kind of, they, they throw everything at it, right? Yeah. And that's the bottom of the barrel varieties. They don't perform well. Same thing with sports fields uh, that, are, that are put in during new construction. It's just kind of whatever seed is there, that, that's what we throw at it. And then when they don't perform, people wonder why. Well, a lot of it's the genetics of the grass. It needs to be, you know, aggressive, quick germinator, repairs itself well. That's what bluegrass does well. Yeah. And then after that, it's taken care of it. So there, there's, you have to be timely with, with what you're doing at different stages of growth. So you, you hit on a pre-emergent. We're always doing pre-emergents. That's at, at plant. And then uh, we'll, we'll do them in the spring. But as a farmer, right, trying to grow a profitable crop, there's a there's a line there. So we we can't just be throwing everything at this thing every week. At the end of this crop, when this crop comes up onto a pallet and goes to its final home, we need to have something left to plant the next crop. Mm -hmm. Pay the men, continue on. Uh, so we, we try and be, we scout a lot looking for weeds there's a tolerance right we, we don't want weeds going down the road so we'll if we have a few pop up we'll hit it you know prior to harvest mm -hmm. uh, but 
with the pre-emergence, with the right pre-emergence at the right time, we've been pretty successful with, with no sprays. Yeah. Any type of herbicide action, you know, you get a little knockback on your roots. and yep. uh, So we try and limit that as much as we can. It, it looks nice on top, but this is all about what's underneath. It's all about the roots. Yeah. That's what gets it up as a piece of sod. That's what keeps it strong and healthy. Yeah. So how thick of a, a root zone do you take when you when you cut your sod? That's that's always that's a question we get asked a lot because people the first question people ask me when they they see me somewhere they then they say well, what do you do I say I'm a sod farmer they say well how much topsoil do you put back? <laughs> that's, well, that's one of yeah. the common questions. Okay, yeah. We, we can't afford that. <laughs> that, that, that. We can't do that. So we we need to be judicious again with how much soil we take along. So the thinner you cut it, the faster it's going to root. Mm -hmm. And then the thinner you cut it, the lighter it is on a pallet, the lighter it is for us to haul it, the lighter it is for you to put it down when you lay it. Uh, so we, it's just, it's very thin amount of soil. It's mainly the thatch, the roots, and then, and you see the grass on top. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, half inch max. Okay. Uh, you get into situations, and we, we don't do it ourselves because it's really a specialty, but like you'll see on the NFL or, or, uh, you know, college football where they'll, they'll lay sod and they play right away. That's very thick. Yeah. That's a different animal than what we're doing. That, that's, that's its own specialty. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we don't haul topsoil <laughs> in. You know, we, we do things like we'll, we'll, we'll put cover crops in when the field's empty. Mm -hmm. If it's, if we get it empty in the summer, we'll put a cover crop in. We'll turn that under for organic matter. And you have to remember too, the roots on these things, if, if you dug down this field, the roots are probably down you know, a foot, 18 inches. Hmm. So we're leaving that whole mass behind and we're turning, uh, we haul in some organic matter from, from different farms in the area. Uh, yeah. But that's really how we keep this thing rolling. Okay. All right, so that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is a three-part series, so make sure you're subscribed. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.